do advocate we actually do. Do we remain um, dependent on fossil fuel? Oh, oh yes, that's all right. right. It's what, much what? the best way. So, so what about the, the, the massive pollution, yeah. climate, you know, greenhouse no, you, gases aside from green, coal, and, and the, the, the health issues from, from coal? Greenhouse gases are harmed. What about, well, what about the, you just in, in China, in Spain, China, in China, in China, a baby, I think. Lord Longden, in yeah. China, a baby every 30 seconds is born with adverse defect due to coal pollution. What do you say about ah, that? What I say about that is that if you want to use fossil fuels, you must use them properly. Now, no, I work at Churchill just... College, Cambridge, um, some 40 years ago now, with a colleague who was an expert on what is called fluidized bed um, burning of coal, which gives you much closer to the ideal or stoichiometric combustion. Now, stoichiometry is to chemistry as calculus is to mathematics. You don't have to explain it's, it the, it's the, well, no, you're a chemist, I think. So no, I'm a cleaning production consultant, so I'm... You're a what kind of? I'm a CP consultant. Right, well, there we are. So, but uh, this lady, this lady, I'm talking to here, <coughs> explaining that that is what stoichiometry is. If you can achieve something as close as possible to stoichiometric combustion, then the particulate pollutions that would otherwise happen are minimized and in, in some cases eradicated. And therefore you get very little pollution indeed. And in fact, largely in the West we have succeeded in doing this now, either by stoichiometric combustion or by scrubbing the, or by filtering out the pollution before it gets into the atmosphere. It's not, it's not, um, but CO2 it's is harmless, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, Did you ask my question yeah. about the fossil fuel yeah. economy? Right. Yes, yes, let's come on to that. We're going to run no, out. Let's come on to that. Oh, the problem here is this, and this is where we need to go into, into demographics. Now, demography says this, that the poorer a population is, the faster its birth rate, the higher its birth rate will be the richer a population is, and that means the general population rather than just a few at the top, the richer a general population is, the more its population growth will tend towards mere But they use more fossil fuels. No, no, no. So let, let, me explain, let, me, let me explain, no. therefore, why it is necessary at the moment that we should allow fossil fuels to be used as freely as the laws of the free market would allow. Like if, you, if you do that, it, well, I don't know what label you put on it, but if you do that, then you, you have the fastest way of lifting the very poorest out of poverty. I actually agree and, that and developing you, countries should be allowed to like use some of fuel. We've like actually you got the, <coughs> the massive consumption. We're using more, much more than our fair quota of fossil fuels. Well, uh, that's... Which that's is the no, there's, there's so much of control this around. In, in rich countries, there's because they are the ones that are polluting well, uh, the mass uh, per capita. What is, what, happening, that? what is happening at the moment is you can't enforce um, attempts to control population by force. They tried it in India, they tried it in China. No, no, the not. human rights really issues are, are enormous. That. And so I, I, I personally wouldn't go there. Like, what I'm possible. talking about is that you have to allow fossil fuels to be used, particularly in the poorest countries, yeah. to lift them out of... No, I'm not. What about when they run out? And that is why I disagree with the Danish government's draft. We've only got a certain As a delegate here, I disagree with the Danish government's draft, which says that the... Uh, countries of the West should be allowed to burn twice as much per capita as the poorer countries. If anything, it should be the other way around. But what we have to do is to accept that there is a direct, well-measured, well-established economic correlation, here we shift from demographics into economics, between the amount of fossil fuels burnt and CO2 emitted per capita life expectancy and, and what about when they it run out and there's like an anti it does have to be like that well, and what because, about when they've got high consumption the in the why, US compared the to some the, of the Scandinavian that's a, that's, countries let's come on with that much question in a moment I want to nail this one down first yeah. first of all we have to establish that therefore we can't just say no we can't use fossil fuels there's plenty of huge then reserves what? Yeah. huge reserves. What? Oh, there even are though we have to them out of the proven, now. There are more proven reserves. Of, no, we don't. It's only because there are restrictions yeah, imposed by environmentalists on drilling off, off the coast of California, for instance. And so they, they, they have to go to the tar sands in Alberta where the government is less... Oh, yeah, well, it, it, but it, it, how does they run out? Clearly, if you're on a single planet with finite resources, at some point they will run out. They will run out yeah. a great deal faster if you do not find... And a morally acceptable way of stabilizing the population. 
the fastest way to stabilize the population of humans on this planet is to raise the standard of living of the poorest. This is well settled demographics. And the fastest way to end the population uh, explosion the in the poorer countries yeah. is to allow them to burn fossil fuels.